Hey, good morning, FCF. We're going to pick up in our study going through the book of Philippians. Now, a little bit of a change here. We went through chapter 3. We completed it in verse 21. But I should have included chapter 4, verse 1. Let me explain. Chapter divisions are not inspired. Okay, the scripture is inspired by God, but the chapter divisions that we have in our Bibles were actually added in 1227 uh, by a guy named Stephen Langdon. And so sometimes uh, chapter division is not quite accurate. So instead of chapter 3 ending at verse 21, it should have been um, chapter 4, verse 1 included in that. But we're going to kind of combine chapter 4, verse 1 through 3 to get ourselves started today. And, and I'll try to make sense of it all. So let's start in chapter 4. Now, now background, chapter 3, and maybe it will be helpful to read that, uh, verse 20. The Apostle Paul says, Our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. So he's finishing it up with that etern eternal perspective and, and the, the central hope for Christians, the return of Christ and all that that will mean uh, for us personally, new bodies, as well as um, a whole new life where the abolition of evil ultimately forever, you know, starts to become uh, concrete. So anyway, he's finishing up on that theme of, of our hope. And then chapter 4, verse 1 picks up. He says, Therefore, my brothers, you whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, that is how you should stand firm in the Lord, dear friends. <clears throat> now, that doesn't make sense, chapter 4, verse 1, unless you include it in everything that Paul has been saying in chapter 3, where he talked about that his major pursuit in his life is to grow, to be more like Christ, and he didn't think that he had reached perfection or full maturity yet, and he was constantly pursuing it. And he said everyone that's mature in Christ has the same attitude of constant pursuit of Christ-like development. And then he ends with, you know, this fixate or this focus on the eternal. When Christ returns, we get our resurrection bodies and that kind of thing. So he's saying, if you want to stand firm in Christ, you've got to be pursuing constant forward movement, constant growth, and your hope must be firmly fixed on the promised future that you will have when Christ returns, that you are not trying to get it all now, because if you try to get it all now, it will only frustrate you. It is an impossibility. Nothing in this life, nothing in this world is ever as good as what our deepest core desires are, those deepest core desires will be realized when Christ returns and he starts the abolition of evil leading into the eternal kingdom of Revelation 21. All right, so he's saying you can stand firm by pursuing growth and by keeping your hope on the future. Don't try to get it all now. It'll only disorient you and disappoint you. So now he's going to pick up in a very practical situation that was occurring in the uh, Philippian church. So, so we're going to go to verse 2 now. He says, I plead with Euodia and I plead with Syntyche to agree with each other in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you, <clears throat> loyal yoke fellows, some translations have a, a, pr a proper name, Sidkus. Uh, at any rate, it's an individual in the Philippian assembly. We don't know who it is. He says, yes, and I ask you, loyal yoke fellow or Sidkus, help these women who have contended at my side in the gospel along with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. Well, verse 2 is interesting. You know, so Paul, mind you, he, he's in jail writing this letter, but he's so concerned about the condition of the Philippian assembly. And there's two ladies that have prominence in the assembly. Now, remember, uh, the Philippian church started when Paul met a businesswoman, Lydia, uh, down by Riverside at a place where people were gathered for prayer and from her house then became the base of the church. So women were having a prominent role, a, a leadership role, in these New Testament churches. This was a huge, uh, you know, change from the synagogue structure in which women sat, you know, in a different place and they were, they were kept silent and all this sort of thing. And the whole role of women was elevated by Christ, by the New Testament church. But here you have two women, and Paul praises them. He says, man, they, they were fellow laborers. <clears throat> they were faithful. They really helped to push the gospel forward, to get the gospel, the message of Christ out. 
but right now they're they're butting heads with each other. So this, this tells us a lot that in local churches we should not expect everyone and everything to be perfect. Quite quite the opposite. Uh, we are we are followers of Christ, but we are still flawed, and we are at different levels of development and growth. And it is not unusual for Christians to have friction. Even when we're seeking to do the will of God, we might differ in the methodology of, of how it can be done. So here's two ladies, and these two ladies, Paul says, their their conflict was one that they needed outside help. And I think this is something good to factor in that real Christians in real churches can get in a real conflict to the point that they have to have uh, others involve themselves to, to help them resolve their conflict. There are some conflicts that we may have in our lives as Christians that we cannot resolve. We may need help. That's normative. That's not anything to be ashamed of. It's not anything to be embarrassed about. So it's just kind of almost a humorous little aside, <clears throat> but Paul is a concern because these ladies, these ladies evidently had a lot of influence. He mentions a guy named Clement, uh, again, uh, key worker in, in the assembly there, and he says their names were written in the Book of Life. Now the Book of Life, when you track it through Scripture, is fascinating. It's mentioned in the Old Testament. It's mentioned several times in the New Testament. It's mentioned in the Book of Revelation. What the teaching seems to be, now notice I said seems to be because we can't be really absolute about this dogmatic but it seems like when when we come into existence when we are born our names are written in God's book of life however uh, our names can be blotted out of the book of life uh, we, we have several instances where where a warning is given about that so what does that mean seems like best we can tell from scripture if a person crosses a certain threshold where for whatever reason they are never going to be open to trusting in god they are never going to be open to following christ that they are blotted out <clears throat> of the book of life um, they're they're not going to be in other words citizens of heaven like paul said in chapter 3 verse 20 they're they're not going to be members of god's eternal family they they wouldn't fit in that kind of a setting so our names, it appears, are written in the Book of Life from the time we're born. Others would say, no, 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 your name gets written in the Book of Life when you put your trust in Christ and become his follower. Uh, that would be kind of hard to prove, but it, it's not that contradictory. It's not an important thing. But Paul is saying, if nothing else, that real Christ followers whose names are written in heaven, they too can have some conflict and some difficulties, and, and that's all part of the developmental growth process and even involving others to help resolve it. So, <clears throat> maybe you're in a bit of a conflict with somebody that's a fellow follower of Christ. It's okay, and perhaps you might even need to try to get some help to, to get things to uh, be ironed out and get back unified with the greater purposes of serving Christ and not letting our personal differences uh, interfere with that. Pick it up again tomorrow. Thank you. <clears throat>